Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to look into PWA, so-called Progressive Web Apps. Now I personally didn't care too much about PWAs um, in the past and um, honestly I had a really hard have time to truly really understand what they are and what their benefits are. But this has changed like completely and pretty much like every project I build, not only for here at home but also at work, um, we build from scratch um, as a PWA um, because why not? They're awesome. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to share some info on, on progressive web apps with you guys, what they are, how they work. Um, and yeah, let's let's have a look. So um, let's look at the key features of PWAs. Um, now first of all, you have to keep in mind that it's basically just a web app or website, if you will. So, so it's not that fancy or different from, from the stuff that you already know. Um, and obviously it's built with web technology. So that means HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Um, so for the moment, it's not that fancy. But the cool part is that you can take a, like, like one of these apps and now you can install them locally, not only on a, on a desktop computer, but also on your mobile device, like an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device, whatever. And the cool part is, if, if you do it well, it will look like a native app. Um, so for example, if you install that on, on your computer, like I'm on a Mac here, then you will have an icon in your dock. Uh, you just click it, and then it will open your app. Okay? And basically, I would say, if you do it well, a casual user would not be able to tell that this is a web app. So it can be installed locally and it can even run when the computer is offline, which I find like super cool. Um, and most of this stuff is automated. So for example, let's have, let's imagine you have an app which has several assets, like for example, images, um, videos, uh, CSS files, whatever. And when you, when you install that PWA on your computer, um, it will basically download all these files, store them locally, and even when, you, when your computer is offline, you will still be able to use that app and will even play back media, like for example, video, which is totally awesome. And the third and last part, um, it can automatically update itself. So um, I don't know how it works on, on all browsers because I'm usually using Chrome. But the cool part is if you want to update your app, all you have to do is just upload your new files to, to your file server, uh, sorry, to, to your web server. And the PWA, which is installed on, on your user's computer, it will automatically detect when something has changed on the server and then download those files in the background without the user noticing it. And next time he, re he restarts the app, um, he will see the new version, right? And it's, there's not much you have to do because the browser will, will take care of it, which is really nice. So uh, how does it work? Uh, let's have a look. So there are three key components um, which you need to know about. So one is the service worker file, uh, the so-called manifest file, and workbox. Now the service worker file... With the <laughs> Now the service worker file is nothing fancy. It's just a JavaScript file. And uh, back then when I started with PWIs, um, I found these quite hard to understand. Um, there's like a lot of weird JavaScript code in there, which, which you usually don't see. Um, but you don't have to worry much about it. The service worker file just runs in the background, okay? Um, it even doesn't have any access to the window object or to the DOM object because its only purpose is to um, catch requests to assets, like for example, to a video or image or whatever, and then cache that and deliver it back to the app when it's needed. Um, and the reason why you don't have to worry too much about these, these service worker files is like, today you can create a new application or a new project pretty easily with a CLI, right? So for example, frame seven comes with a CLI, um, uh, Vue.js comes with a CLI, uh, React comes with a CLI, so most of the time you just start a new project and 
either you already get a uh, service worker file, so that's the case with uh, the Create React App application, um, or when you when you start a new project, you usually have the option um, to to choose if you want a PWA or not, which is pretty cool, I would say. So don't worry too much about the service worker file. Just assume it's there. It does the job for you, and that's about it. So the manifest file, um, that's also just a plain text file, and it just has a little bit of information about your app. So for example, um, uh, it provides a name, it provides a description, what's it about. Um, very important, it will reference a couple of icons that, were that you want to use. So for example, if you install your PWA on your Windows machine, um, then you will have like a desktop, uh, desktop icon um, which you can double click to start the app and obviously you want an image for that icon so that's where you um, where you uh, define that in this manifest file uh, but also you don't have to worry too much about this file just enter your, your stuff um, that you want to share and that's pretty much it and the third part which is quite important is workbox now workbox is not a file it's a library uh, from Google so let's have a look into that so here we have workbox, um, and the main purpose of workbox is um, now the thing is with 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 static assets like take for example an image. When you when you cache those files, it's really hard to determine if the new version has been uploaded to to a server or not. And workbox helps we, helps you with this, uh, and what it does is it basically takes to the, the name of your file, it adds a hash to it, and then the ending. Okay, so for example, uh, carrot.jpg becomes carrot.hash.jpg. Um, and the reason why, why uh, Workbox does this for you is that um, when you change the name of a file, your browser will assume that um, that is a new file and then re-download it. But if the file doesn't change, or the file name doesn't change, it doesn't know, is it, is it a new file, has something changed? Um, then it's really hard to, to update those, those assets. And I can actually show you an example file. So here we have this pre-cache manifest. So this file is, um, is created by a workbox. And you can see, so you a lot of static stuff in here. So for example, there's this image down here, this one. Um, and we have a hash for that file. So eventually, when you when you upload your build, uh, what it does is it will um, it will create a reference to your file, and probably will will look kind of something like this. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I think we can have a quick look at this manifest file over here. So here, obviously. Um, I just created a test file as a manifest. Um, as you can see, it's just the name, the short name description, and a bit of, little bit of stuff. Um, you have to fill this in if you want to be able to install the app uh, locally, but we're going to look into this in an example um, in the next video. So uh, that one, we're going to just create a little demo application, which we'll be able to install locally. Um, so you get a basic understanding how to create a PWA. All right, that's it for the moment. Uh, see you in the next episode of this uh, series. Is it a series? I don't think so. <laughs> um, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.